Ladies and gentlemen, um, good morning. Today I'm going to um, conclude the ISLMBP and this is how I'm going to conclude it. I'm now going to show the impact of increase in export. You can see here I say increase in exports and then and then and then I'm going to show it on IS um, uh, 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 um, LMBP. So before I start, I want to sort of highlight this to say you no, know, but actually what can actually increase exports in South Africa. So firstly, when the output in USA increases. So now you must know that anything that increases the output or the income or GDP. Now we can use these concepts interchangeably. Output, income or GDP in the United States. It will lead to increase in exports. In exports, but now these exports are South African exports. That's what you need to understand. So the only way, and then this is the way that we can sort of explain the increase in income in US, how does it impact the, uh, the, the South Africa? Right. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to jump into the model itself, and then 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 I, I'm gonna jump into the model and then see then then and then see if 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 you are able to understand what I'm doing here is output and then here is interest rate. So what is happening now is I'm going to draw the first line here. It's going to be IS one, and then the second one here is going to be LM one, and then the last one here is going to be BP one. Right. So this is what happens in the system. So now, how do we explain this? We explain this by saying, remember, we must have about um, three um, uh, 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 or rather or four steps that we need to explain here. Now, this is what we're going to do. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put it here. And then if you're able to see the diagram, it's fine. But now we're going to put it here. And then now look at ISLMBP. Look at this diagram, how, how it looks. Look at this diagram. So now this diagram, it looks this way. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then what I'm going to do now is, I am going to start by saying, let's explain the primary effect. And then, and then from there, we will explain the secondary effect. And then we'll explain the initial effect on the balance of payment and then we will have the concluding effect on the balance of payment right now what is happening here now is we're saying exports are increasing in south africa maybe it's because the uh, uh, the foreign income increased or the foreign gdp increased whatever the case might be but now what we know is that exports in south africa are increasing now if south african exports are increasing we know that now the total expenditure is going to increase because export is part of c plus i plus g plus x minus m and then now the output is going to increase that is the gdp in south africa is going to increase now we come to the secondary effect you can see that we take it from the income here we say as income increases Therefore, people tend to demand more money. We have more demand for money, especially for transaction purposes. Now, if that's the case, the interest rate is going to increase. And if that's the case, then the investment is going to decrease. And then the income is going to decrease. You can say the income is going to decrease. But if you look at the income decreasing here, and income decreasing there, obviously, the net will be increased because now the one in the primary effect is going to be bigger than the secondary effect. But now, what we're going to do is, remember, when interest rate changes, it also affects the, it does not only affect the, 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 the real sector, it also affects the, the financial sector or monetary sector. So now, we will have the inflow of funds. And then, and then this will lead to the balance of payment surplus right now 
you can see now we've got the balance of PM surplus because this is going to be financial account surplus. You know, like in this case, financial account overwhelm the current account. Right. Now, what is happening is we are saying that now the balance of payment is surplus, which is what I showed there. And now let's see. We know that when exports are increasing, which is this first one in the primary, the first thing that we know is two curves are affected here because exports is actually export is affecting the BP curve, but it's also affecting the IS curve. So therefore, the IS is going to shift to the right. Now I have IS two, and then the BP is also going to shift to the right. And then we've got there, we've got the BP2, which is what I'm going to put there now to say this is BP2. But now we moved from this initial equilibrium here, and then the second equilibrium now we can see that now it's going to be here where LM intersects the, the IS. It's going to be here, and that is going to be equilibrium number two. Now, and we can see that this. Balance of payment surplus here is supported by the diagram because this point two here is above the balance of payment curve two. And then what is going to happen now is we know that we've got the BOP surplus. Even here, the code we have got the BOP surplus. But now with the first one here, we say BOP surplus means more money. Supply, and if there's more supply, now you can reason it uh, going forward. If more money supply, then the interest rate will go down, and then you know you can reason it going down. But what we are interested here is this one means more money supply. Therefore, the LM curve is going to shift to the right. Now you can see now when the LM shift to the right to to LM two. Now, the surplus is being reduced. And then, now let's go to the concluding effect. The concluding effect now we say, if we've got balance of payment surplus, means money is coming in, there's too much demand for rent, therefore the rent is going to, the rent is going to appreciate. Now we see the appreciation of the rent, which means now it, exports are going to come down because, and then imports are going to go up, and then net export is going to go down. So therefore now, you know, like if the rent is stronger, it's difficult for people from outside to buy goods and services from South Africa. Therefore, it means that now in this case, we will have two shifts. The first shift now is because it's, 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 it has to do with net exports. Is that IS curve is going to shift to the left. And then... This one shifted to the left. You see now it moves from there to there. That is left what? And then now this one is going to be on. This will be our new equilibrium. And then that's equilibrium number four. And then our IS shifted to the left. But now the BP as well must shift to the left. And then we say BP2 must shift to the left. And now they all intersect. Now we put BP3. Now they all intersect at equilibrium for now the equilibrium point is restored and then basically that's it now i'm going to show you exactly all these steps and then you will try it once now you can do it then you 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 will definitely uh, try a decrease in 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 exports so that you can see that now you're able to 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 to, to explain these things now it means in the question paper, when you see the question saying a contraction of the economy in US, now you know that our exports are going to go down and then that is decreasing export. But if we say now there's a boom phase in US, then you know that now our exports are going to go up. That is exactly how it, 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 it happens. So you must just use your textbook to, to, to explain the determinants of exports, the determinants of imports, 
and then and so on and so on. Determinants of money supply, determinants of money demand, and so on. So that you know all these factors, so that you know when to shift which uh, curve. Right. So now going back to the, um, the, the model here. Remember, now you see a lot of shifts here. But all these shifts we started with the first one, and the first one. What we are saying here is we are saying that we started by saying exports are increasing in South Africa and then IS shifted to the new IS here, which is IS2. But because it was a rightward shift of IS curve, this one, because it's export, it also shifted the BP to the right, this one here. And then now you see the new intersection is what? It's IS2 and LM1. That is here. That's where the economy is. And this point is above the BP curve, the new BP curve. So therefore, that is surplus on the balance of payment. And then I explain everything from the primary effect to the secondary effect. And I find that, obviously, the first effect on the financial account was that interest rates going up. So which means we put inflow of funds. Therefore, it means on the financial account, we have them. We have them surplus. But because financial accounts overwhelm the current account, now we know that the balance of payment is definitely going to be surplus. Now, once we have balance of payment surplus, now you jump to the initial impact of balance of payment. Because we have balance of payment surplus, now we say that will lead to increasing money supply in the economy. And then increasing money supply will shift the LM curve to the, to the right. And this is what I'm talking about. And then... The concluding effect shows that now we are going to have the rent appreciating. And if the rent is appreciating, then the exports are going to go down because now we've got stronger rent. People from other countries can not afford our, our um, uh, uh, goods and services because now we are actually very expensive in terms of buying the rent. But now if exports are going down, imports are going up, Net export is going down, therefore it means your balance of payment curve and exports curve are going to shift to the left, which is what I did here. And, and, and now you see that now the equilibrium point is restored. Now, you have to practice these things many times, especially during these times of holidays. Practice them until you understand and once you begin to understand and then start practicing the opposite of it, which is um, the impact of decrease in export. So you need to understand that how we can phrase this kind of question, we can phrase it by telling you that good things are happening in US. And now remember, we are not in US, we are in South Africa. So if we start talking about good things about US and then their GDP is going up, the economy is growing, therefore it means US will buy more goods. When they buy more goods, they start buying our goods as well, which means our exports are going to increase. And then, and then you start working from there. But if we say bad things about US, and it's a contraction, you know, the economy is not doing well, and so on, and so on. So we know that in that case, exports are going to decrease, and then output is going to decrease, and then now money demand is going to decrease, and then on all this, we will have deficit on what what balance of payment, and it's going to be the opposite, exactly the opposite. So guys, please, don't wait for the last minute to read these things until you understand them very well. I would like to just end it here. And I hope everyone will understand it and will enjoy it. Thank you very much.